Hi, good morning everybody. Thanks for coming. I hope you're well. Today I want to talk to you about the Statue of Liberty. I'm going to give myself 10 minutes for this one. I find if I don't time these talks, I just tend to go on and on and on, waffle on. So I'm going to give myself 10 minutes. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. The Statue of Liberty in 10 minutes. 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, you all know the Statue of Liberty, I'm sure. It's an iconic symbol of America. It's based in New York, and it's the statue of a lady holding a torch and a book in one hand. I'm sure you've all seen it on TV or seen pictures of it, even if you haven't actually seen the real thing. The Statue of Liberty's full name is Liberty Enlightening the World, and it was a gift from France. Now, the idea for this gift came around in 1865, when two French people were talking. The American Civil War had just finished, 1861 to 1865, and the North, the Union, had won. And America was now technically free. Slaves were freed, America was free. France had also had a revolution, a civil war of sorts. And France was a republic and was free. And French people um, valued their freedom, their liberty. So in France, two people, Edward René de la Boile and Frederick August Bartholdi, they had a conversation. One of them said to the other, well, America has just had this civil war and now they've, they're finished and they're free. We should give them a gift to celebrate their freedom, their liberty. And Bartholdi said, that's an excellent idea. I think I will. Now, Bartholdi was a sculptor. So he went away and he designed the statue. But he's a sculptor. He works with clay, he works with rock, he doesn't work with metals. So he turned to his friend, Gustave Eiffel, and he said to him, can you uh, design this, the uh, structure? And Eiffel said, sure, okay. Now Eiffel is famous for working with metal. You've probably heard about him before. He designed a very famous building in France, the Eiffel Tower, Eiffel Tour. Um, so he designed the central structure for it. Now the idea for the statue um, came from a building, well, a statue called the Colossus of Rhodes. In the world, a long time ago, there were seven wonders of the natural world, well, seven wonders of the world. Only one of them is still standing, the Great Pyramid at Giza. The other six have disappeared or fallen down. One of them was the Colossus at Rhodes. This was a giant statue, 33 meters high, that stood on the island of Rhodes, just off Greece. It stood with its legs either side of the harbor, so any ships coming into Rhodes would have to go through the legs of this giant statue. 33 meters high. And Bartholdi, he looked at that idea and he thought, that's really good. I'll do something similar to that. I'll make a statue of a giant person. So, place, where to put it? He went to America to talk to them about the idea. And as he sailed into New York, his ship went past an island called Bedloe Island. And he thought, wow, what an excellent place. Any ship that comes into New York will have to sail past this island. I'm going to put it there. And he asked the American government, and they said, yeah, we own that land. We can use that land. No problem. Of course, now the name's been changed to Liberty Island, but that's how he decided where to put it. Now, the design. Um, he was copying the Colossus of Rhodes, of course, but he didn't want something exactly the same. He thought, what's the symbol of America? And Columbia is the symbol of America. Columbia is basically uh, a woman. She is the female symbol of America. The word Columbia comes from the discoverer of America, who was Christopher Columbus, of course, plus IA, which in Latin means a country. For example, Italy in Latin is Italia, I think. The IA is the country. So Christopher Columbus, IA, Columbia. Columbia is the symbol of America. You can see Columbia in a few places. Um, if you watch a movie, the Columbia production company, they always start their movies with Columbia holding a torch. Um, the District of Columbia, the Washington, the capital of America, Washington DC, District of Columbia, the Columbia is again Columbia. So he thought, I will build a statue of Columbia. Oh, incidentally, America is called America, not Columbia, because um, Amerigo Vespucci, the explorer, as I'm sure you all know, he was the first person to prove that America, the Americas were not part of Asia. Christopher Columbus always thought they were part of Asia, um, but of course they're not. And Amerigo Vespucci was the first person to prove that, so Amerigo, Americus in Latin, America, the country, I think. Okay, so um, Bartholdi decides to start work on this sculpture. 1875, he finishes the design. 1876, they begin working. 1878, their head's finished, but they're running out of money. So they go to the French government to get funding, and France has no problem paying for this. 
Uh, France has a lottery. Regular people buy lottery tickets. They win great prizes. And France very easily raises 250,000 francs, which is about 6 million of today's US dollars. However, the French are only going to pay for the statue. The pedestal, the thing that the statue stands on, the Americans are going to pay for, and this is agreed. But when it comes time to pay for it, the Americans don't want to pay. It's a present from France. Why should we have to pay for it, they say. And the Civil War has just finished. There is uh, uncertainty in the country, economic uncertainty. There is an economic panic in 1873. People don't have a lot of money. The government doesn't have a lot of money. They don't want to pay for this. So the people in charge of the statue, they have a, a huge problem trying to raise money for this statue. And it becomes quite embarrassing for New York. In fact, other cities, Boston and Philadelphia, they say, we'll pay, we'll pay, bring it here. But um, they want to put it in New York, but New Yorkers won't pay. So Joseph Pulitzer, you may have heard of Pulitzer. There's a Pulitzer Prize. The prize is named after him. Um, he was the publisher of the New York World, the newspaper. He said to people, I will publish the name of anybody that donates money towards this pedestal, no matter how small, even if it's only one cent. And he does. And he starts publishing their names, and he starts publishing the letters he receives. Um, so and so, an, an eight-year-old girl donated three cents, which is her entire pocket money for the week. Um, John, he donated his beer money for the week. He publishes all these names and all these letters, and it takes off and people start finally giving the money. And he manages to raise $102,000, which is about two and a half million of today's dollars. So finally, after about three years, they can pay for the pedestal. So 1885, the statue is shipped from France. It's built, 18, uh, 1886, October 28th, it's opened. And we have the Statue of Liberty. A few statistics for you. Um, the pedestal is 47 meters high. The statue is 46 meters high, which gives a grand total of 93 meters, I think. Um, it's 225 tons. There are 324 steps. Um, Liberty is holding a book. On the book, it says July IV MDCCLXXVI. You know what that means? Those are Roman numerals. Um, it says July 4th, 1776, which is obviously an important day in American history. It's America's Independence Day, their day of freedom. And Liberty is a statue of freedom. She also has a broken chain in front of her. If you look at her feet, she's walking over a broken chain, symbolizing freedom. And if you look, I can't show you, but her back foot is raised, symbolizing she's walking forwards. So she's walking over a broken chain. Okay, so it's all about freedom um, at the end of slavery. Uh, okay, since then, um, obviously it's oh, over 100 years old now, the statue, and metal does corrode. There have been a few problems. And in 1984, the statue was closed for uh, refurbishment. There were quite a few problems. I mean, it's a copper skin, which copper obviously oxidizes. Copper is basically a golden color, but once it's exposed to the air, it goes greeny. So, um, Liberty is not actually green. She's supposed to be like a golden color. So the, the skin had oxidized. The metal had corroded in places. The skin had holes. Um, some bits were broken. The head wasn't on quite straight. One of the arms was loose and swayed way too much in the wind. So in, 1884, uh, sorry. So in 1984, the statue was closed for refurbishment. They fixed almost everything. They fixed the skin. They took copper off a roof nearby and they fixed the skin. They repainted it. They fixed the torch. They realigned the torch. They put a new torch on. Um, they fixed all the holes. They replaced the structure. Um, Eiffel had used iron, of course. They didn't have steel back then. He'd used iron. And iron, of course, corrodes and it's not very strong. So they replaced the core with a steel structure that actually moves in the wind. They put in a lift, an elevator. Uh, they widened the doors. They re-angled the light so it reflects the sun better. They refixed the head, everything. And in 1986, the statue was reopened after 100 years. Is it the same statue? That's hard to say because pretty much everything was changed. But the statue was reopened and today you can go and visit the statue if you want. Um, at the base of the statue, there is a quotation which is taken from a poem, a poem by an American lady called Emma Lazarus. She wrote this poem as fundraising for the pedestal. When they were trying to get money for the pedestal, they asked her to write an original poem, and she wrote this one called The New Colossus. And at the bottom is a famous quote, which I am going to read for you. Are you ready? Give me your tired, your poor, 
your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. So, the, um, liberty is welcoming everybody from the world. America at that time was a safe haven, was a refuge for anybody in the world that had problems. After the First World War, after the Second World War, when Europe was destroyed, all the refugees went to America. Even now, refugees... Ah, you see, that's why I have to time myself. Even now, refugees from all over the world, they want to go to America. They want to go to America for safety, for the American dream. And when you sail into New York, you go past this statue, and she's saying, come to me, come to me. I will take you. I will help you. And that's the ideal. That's the ideal of freedom. Does it still apply? Does America still accept anybody from around the world? Well, Donald Trump would like to stop that, if he possibly could. But in general, yes, I think America does. Americans are very kind, very welcoming, and very friendly. So, that's 10 minutes about the Statue of Liberty. I hope you could understand all that. If you have any questions or comments or ideas, put them down below here in the comments section. If you have any ideas for things you'd like me to talk about, please get them, put them in the comments section below. If you like this, click like. Um, in the description down here, there's a link for the script, questions, answers, the MP3, have a look. If you want to subscribe, click subscribe, looks like my head, and you can get these talks whenever I make them. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye.